slash and burn has, has fed this country for millennia. Uh, but the problem is that now the population growth is such that you don't have the long fallow periods that were originally there. Uh, farmers used to slash, burn, and then leave fallow for 10, 15 years. They go back and then you have good fertility, you have good weed control. Uh, but now the fallows are down to five years, sometimes as, as much as three years. So the soil is not very fertile, the yields are very low, you have a lot of weed problems, a lot of labor problems. Uh, so it, it is a practice from the past, uh, probably not appropriate for the type of population, type of economy that people want today. One of the big problems that farmers have is they just don't have cash. So getting cash in their pockets will improve their food security quite, quite well. Uh, one of the big problems, of course, is that we don't have capital in the country, and that's one reason that international investors or national investors are very important in the agriculture sector uh, to bring capital. And, and Aldox is also bringing a lot of international expertise, uh, professionalizing agriculture in, in new ways. Uh, so these, these are some added benefits. Uh, but there does have to be, I think, a, a national discussion of, you know, we don't want to cover the whole country with sugarcane, I don't think. Uh, there's other activities that uh, are also beneficial, uh, depending on the type of land that you're looking at. There was a conflict for a reason. Uh, there was a lot of abuses in the past. So I think a lot of people are very skeptical about uh, how equitable uh, in the impact will be on, on different people. I mean, of course, you, you don't want a, a big company that comes and scrapes up all the, the profits and there's no benefits for the local population. We have some examples of that. Uh, so there has to be equitable benefits, and I think a lot of people, they, until they see them, they, it'll take some time to believe that that's going to be possible. Is the amount of prepared agricultural land that people are getting thanks to ADEX, is that enough? Um, I think so, for right now. Um, farmers, once they learn how to grow better, then they will start increasing their yields. I don't think it's so much the area, it will be the yield levels over time that need to be improved. That's mostly the skills of the farmers. But how do you ensure that the, the farmers will have enough land in the future, allowing for population uh, growth? On a nationwide basis, uh, if you take out arable, non-arable, uh, if you take out the area that are uh, currently, uh, say, for cities, city growth, urban growth, uh, the, and then we take out the area that is for food security for a population in 2050, which would be about double of today, 12 million, uh, we still have about uh, one to two million hectares of arable land that can be dedicated to more export crops beyond what we're doing now. If more and more companies keep on coming in for export crop and start using the water, then there'll be no more water left for the villagers, right? Uh, not necessarily. We have, uh, I mean, we're blessed with a lot of water in the country, 4,000 millimeters a year on the coast, 3,000 in this area. Uh, so it's a, a lot of water. Groundwater here is quite easy to get hold of. Um, it's more of the management of the water in many ways. Um, of course, the government does need to start regulating their water use. Uh, and probably we'll have to start asking different people to pay for it so they use it more efficiently over time. I think that we need not just food security, but we also need fuel security. There's, right now, at Adox is producing for the European markets because we don't have a similar kind of legislation of having what was it 10 percent of the uh, fuels uh, being required to be renewable. We probably need something like that here as well. Uh, uh, eventually fuel prices are going to go up. We need to talk about fuel security. I, but I think that uh, in general uh, with the European market that's available right now it's a good opportunity for us to get the investment, to build up the infrastructure. Over time, as fuel prices go up, I'm sure that a lot of that renewable uh, bioethanol or biodiesel would be used here as well.